Hi everyone, this is Ryan Wamey, aka Massage Nerd. And today we have Deborah Kimmett from Practical Movement, right? Yeah, you Practical Movement, PMT yeah. Seminars. Oh, okay, perfect. Yes. <laughs> PMT Seminars, okay. and I teach uh, Practical Movement, which is somatic movement re-education from a postural perspective. Okay. So a lot of people are familiar with uh, somatic movement re-education, which is movement with awareness, uh, and there's various modalities out there, like Feldenkrais, yep. or some kind of somatics, or, or uh, just basically movement re-education. So I, I take that and I make it much more specific. I hang it off posture. So for example, if someone comes in with a shoulder that's tilted, you might do really great hands-on work that helps get them level, and then the next week they come back and they're the same way again. No. <laughs> I mean, it's like, do you fix them? You know, and there it goes. You work on them, and then there it goes. So what we do then with that is um, part of the reason why they hold those patterns is because the brain keeps telling that muscle to do something that it's always done before, which is this is what feels normal, not being level. So what we need to do is to bring awareness to that and also get the brain to start firing into the muscle in a slightly different way so that it begins to wake up and allow that, um, that hands-on work that people do to hold. And so what I do is um, I make it very specific to not, well, two individual muscles, yes, but, you know, of course, muscles tend not to move one at a time. Yep. There are the <laughs> groups, you know, it's like, okay, biceps, come on, let's do yep. this. It's not going to do that. So, um, but a lot of people are familiar with, well, here's what the pectoralis minor does, and it pulls that shoulder down or pulls it forward, or it rotates that scapula. You have to deal with the antagonist and all that stuff too. Right, yeah. yeah. And so what we yeah. do is we work with the antagonists of those muscles by doing what I call uh, activating movements, where we take the muscle or the, the, the muscle through a full range of motion, that at, um, where it, it lengthens and it shortens, and that will wake it up and start that process of retraining both the muscle itself as well as its antagonist. Okay. And then what we do is then we can also balance the muscles, which is lengthening and shortening muscles and of course the way the body works is it's all all contraction all the time there's yep. no muscles that that go okay muscle yep. now lengthen it's 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 an and somebody told me once that muscles are stupid all they know how to do is contract right yep. exactly <laughs> that's, that's perfect yeah, yeah. That is, so yeah. so so what what i do is i look at the body posturally from a postural assessment view and then um and then uh, have have a uh, target have the person target the, mo the movement to the particular muscles that yeah. they want to work. And is it hard for you to convince a client to do that? Because again, if it's more massage related, everybody's used to just, oh, you treat this area kind of thing. But mm -hmm. you're, you're kind of doing self-teaching too and stuff. Right, well, yeah, yeah as yeah. you know, pain yeah. is a great motivator. Yeah. And when, okay. people, <laughs> when people are yeah. in pain, they will do just about anything to get out of it. Okay. And what I do with the movements when I'm teaching them to therapists, how I teach therapists how to teach their clients how to move. And so with that, they can use it in three ways. Client education, yeah. they can take that um, muscle and do the movement after they've lengthened that muscle. Or sometimes, like for example, the pecti pesky pectoralis minor. <laughs> I you love that. that. Yes, the pesky pect. Yeah. It, it just won't release. And I do a lot of sideline work. Uh -huh. And so um, what I'll do is have the person scoot up to the end of the table and have them do a movement. I'll, have, and I'll just show you right now what you yep. do, is that you um, take the belly button and intention it towards the spine and downward just a little bit so that lengthens the back. So you lock down the back so you're not doing the movement yep. from, the upper, from the upper body because what we want to do is lock down the back so now when you bring the arm up overhead, the person's laying on their side yep. and you slowly move back and forth without any kind of discomfort, without any kind of pain, and you're just taking that movement through its range. And what will begin to happen is the person's range will begin to increase as they're doing it a little bit, and do it for about 15, 30 seconds as they're laying on their side there, if it doesn't cause too much pain to get their arm up there, because again, we want to calm the nervous system, not, yeah. not activate it. So, so then what you do is you put, the, you're, they're still in that sideline position, you can reach underneath and behind that pectoralis major, and all of a sudden that muscle is now softer. And so they'll, they'll notice, because a lot of times I'll palpate people and go, oh boy, this is really tight, it's not gonna release, I'll do the move, for 30 seconds and then I'll come back and I'll go how's that feel now they go and I'll use the same amount of pressure and they'll go wow it doesn't hurt or boy that's a lot less and I said see now you can do this this might be a movement that you might want to try at home to see if that might help you and so they've had a had that kinesthetic sense that kinesthetic feeling yep. of how it can help them or a simple movement if you go to my website I have a, a video on my website through YouTube that um, on YouTube that has uh, one for the SI joint 
And so you can actually do that movement looking for, is it sl is the movement smooth, is it jerky, are there scenic routes, is it going all over the place? And the person's job is to try to make that movement nice and smooth, nice and easy, no jerkiness, those kinds of things. And as they're concentrating on the quality of the movement, your temp that brain is beginning to work and do its job of reprogramming those muscles so as it's firing into those muscles. I love that you're talking about sidelining, um, those kind of treatments too, because the thing is the average therapist doesn't think about it or they just, they're just so used to supine and prone, that's it. Mm -hmm. So it's nice that you get, it's, e it's easier to access those areas too, so. Oh yeah, because yeah. breast tissue just yeah. falls out of the way yeah. and you know, we are three dimensional beings and yeah. so we have depth to us and so we need to look at, at the person from the side yeah. as well. So I, I even like treat the psoas on that sideline position too, so it's so much easier to do that. So, um, are you the one that developed this style then? Yeah, okay. yeah, because what okay. happened was is I started out as an EMT. And okay. uh, so I, I really come from a very strong place of looking at the posture, assessing the posture, seeing where the body's in balance, seeing where the body's not. And I wanted to add neuromuscular retraining, neuromuscular re-education to my toolbox. But what I kept finding out there when I was looking was more generalized classes. Let's explore movements. Let's just do movement and nothing about how it's used, what muscles it affects, how I can put it into my practice, none of those kinds of things. So what ended up happening is that I created that. I pulled together the somatics movement re-education that I had taken from my teachers, the postural things that I had learned from other teachers. And I always give teacher, my teachers credit in the class because, you know, everybody takes what they've learned and put yeah, it together, exactly. and, including, yeah. including people that crawl onto the table, my table, yeah. or the students sitting in the class. They all teach me something. And so, <laughs> yeah, and so by, by putting those things together, what I've done is created very specific targeted movements um, for uh, being able to work with posture, working with structural work, working with your hands-on work. And, and I call it practical movements because it's designed to be practical. You can bring it back into your practice Monday morning and start using this. And the way I've designed my student guides when people come is that they're, there's very little writing for the person to do because they've got all the notes in there. They've got detailed pictures and how the muscles, how the movements are used and, and what muscles cause what imbalances and an handy dandy index that you can look up the muscle and see what movements are affected by that um, and, or affect that muscle. And how many um, self-help treatment things do you recommend at the most for a client to do when they're at home? Um, well, what I do is I want to do at about two the very first time I work with them. <laughs> yep. has, That's because, so many people. Yeah, it's like yep. two or three at the max. Kind of yep, 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 yep. One or two, yep. and because what you're going to do is find out whether or not that client's motivated. And because if yep. they're not motivated, you're it's going to be pulling teeth to get them to do something. Yep. But if they can do awesome that answer. one or two <laughs> things that'll help yep. them out, then um, then then they may be willing, and they see how well that works for them, yep. then they'll ask for more and they'll want more. Yep. And where do you teach these classes? Then? Well, I am right now teaching mainly in the West and okay. I am trying to work my way eastward. So I'm teaching in Montana, Washington, California, and, uh, and Michigan right now. And so I'm okay. always looking for sponsors or schools to have me come in and teach and, um, and looking at expanding my territory. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> and do you have other instructors that teach you too then? Uh, not at this time, but that's okay. that's my goal. Your goal, yep. <laughs> yeah. Is having other people teaching this work. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. And what's the best way to get for people to get a hold of you then? Well, there's three ways. Okay. One is my website, which is www.practicalmovement.com. Uh, and again, that's practicalmovement.com. Yep. Uh, the second way is through email, which is yep. info at practicalmovement.com. <laughs> yep. Info at practicalmovement.com. Yep. And then the third way yep. is through my toll-free number, which is 888-544-4704. Um, so that's 888-544-4704. Okay. I thought you were going to say 1-800-PRACTICAL. No, no. no. <laughs> I couldn't get that you could, one. No, you I tried. Can't. I okay, tried. You tried. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. It's been a pleasure. Oh, thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, thank everyone. You.